If I keep running around, maybe I can find him on the other side. Oh, what on earth is this? Aha! Uh -huh. Strange man was at the door with the pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? His clothes were too finely tailored to be from Whitechapel. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he still asking questions? Yes. I saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. <laughs> so they are running some kind of an undercover hospital here. I must talk to that journalist or the poet. They must know about Darius. Not by the church they just mentioned. Ah, by a church they just mentioned. Richard Nithercott or Clayton Darby. All right. Yes, second stream tonight is H1Z1, guys. People are asking because I didn't update the schedule uh, with Nightbot. But yeah, it is. Take a look. Don't be afraid. Who's this? More, more people to talk to. Welcome, sir. Please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. <laughs> Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me. Came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness. Something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged, though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Sounds like a side quest. I knew it. Yep. Have you been hurt? No. Side quest. That's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Okay. How is business around here? Business? I had no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Joe Peterson, huh? Have you heard of a nurse called Dorothy Crane? I don't even know why I'm nurse asking. Crane. Thank you, Bionichu. So the bitch really is a nurse, then. I always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. So she's trying to help her fellow immigrants. Why would that make her a villain? Dorothy Crane ain't even a real name. Villain. Something like Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. Came to England fleeing the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious yeah. nurse Crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions for free. I offered a sell oh, awful. for a fair cut, but no. <laughs> Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. Oh, I got a Dorothy Crane conversation piece. Right then. Show me what you have. Ah, common trigger part. Well, I bought as much as I could. Yeah, I think I maxed out now. Now I should be able to craft really well when I get back to my uh, my base. 
Find Cleeton in the area. Who the hell's this now? Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? I didn't answer the first one, so piss off! I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. Really? But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. No, Colossus Joe. There you go. Do you enjoy bullying people? How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? <laughs> There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you, there's a ground for who cheers you. That's awesome, glad it's back up and running. Yes, thank you for the cheering. Yes, it is good that DSP Gaming is back. <clears throat> Survival is a natural law. You survive at any cost, even at the expense of others. Perhaps that's just the law of nature. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Oh, more dialogue options. Yep. Barrett Lewis can't unlock. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. Duh. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now sod off. Well, at least he's honest. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine, and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? Yeah, I know her. One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. I offered to give her hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. Okay. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. But now I got another dialogue option for Blake. <laughs> oh God, again? So much dialogue in this game. Good God, 90% of the game is talking, and then every once in a while there's a fight. <laughs> what is going on? Fancy buying something, sir? You never lose your focus, do you? There we go. Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I've known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. It's a story. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. Huh. It's never easy to find a new path in life. Especially after the loss of a loved one. But crime is certainly not the best option. We've all had some rough times, ain't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. It's true, okay. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody would be fool enough to stand against a wet boot boy. So he's a wet boot boy. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis. Okay, that's done. So, is this the church? Yeah, this is the church they were talking about. Oh my god, there's so many people. Dude, Soon there's... Soon the time will come when you will all be judged for your sins. Even now... Excuse me, so sir. Many people. Are you familiar with this part of town? Name's Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, oh, the I'm reporter. new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Aha! Uh -huh. 
An underground medical dispensary. I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. What do you know about it? Not much, I'm afraid. They are weary of strangers, and I'm not really an acquaintance of theirs. Why do you care? I'm a doctor, Mr. Darby. I care about everything involving public health and this epidemic. Are you sure you're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane from the Pembroke Hospital would bring? Uh, no doubt. Typical you journalist are a trying to dig. Journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious, never goes out, doesn't seem to have any friends or family. Huh, weird. He has no relatives at all? No, except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes comes by. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel talking to himself or declaring verses. <laughs> These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Probably where I'm headed next, okay? He never goes out? He never goes <clears throat> out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and threw it away. Duh! What a dick. That's actually pretty funny. What are you doing after sunset? What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Ah, unlocked one of his things. Says he's fatigued. That's quite honorable of you. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. And that's why I'm an independent journalist, hoping to sell some stories. All right. I think I'm enough of this. Yeah, I'm done with this. Goodbye, Mr. Dark. I'll <laughs> continue with the story. Farewell. Mm -mm.